put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Good day to die hard, moon view. This does not, in fact, chronicle McLean's conversion to Klingon, despite the suggestion of that title. No, McLean has been looking for his son for three years, I think, and he is aided by a younger cop, played by Amori Nolasco, who, upon seeing John Moore's name in the opening credits, promptly jumps out of a window to get out of the movie. Don't worry, he'll be fine, and this movie, anybody's fine from what would usually kill people. Who needs tension in action scenes anyway? It's actually a lot like 18 the series. I, I quite like the series, but it was maybe not the most realistic. You'd have, you know, big car crashes and people would get out and be perfectly fine. And that literally happens in this movie. Anyway, he goes to Russia when he finds that his son has been arrested there and he's, he's warned that you know, they do things a little different than around here. I can only assume that he means that there's you know, still actual you know, judicial process in Russia. The film really, really wants to remind the American audience that, hey, it could be worse, at least you're not in Russia. The, uh, he, he goes to Russia to find his son and, well, without giving too much away, basically there's a situation where his son Jack has to protect someone. Yuri, or basically it's a Russian with Sean Connery's beard, and John doesn't exactly understand what's going on at first, and then there are some bad guys, and I suppose that's really all I should give away of the plot. Speaking of the plot, it's rather convoluted. It actually, it's a lot like one of those Matryoshka dolls, you know, the kind where you just take off and there keeps being a smaller doll underneath. And just the more you understand what's going on, the, the less you kind of care and the less this feels like it was actually written as a Die Hard film, which is quite contradictory because it was written as a die it's actually the only one that's been written entirely as a Die Hard film. And it's not that. Before I tear too much into it, I should say I'm not really, I did not go into this expecting like some kind of great masterpiece. I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be like the good Die Hard movies, you know, one through three. I was just hoping for a fun action flick, you know, I, and seeing that it was the writer of the A-Team, I was hoping it was going to be kind of like that, where, you know, physics takes a back seat and you just enjoy it, you know, turn your brain off and enjoy it, but no, it's not even really that. I guess one of the best things I can say about it is that it's not genuinely unpleasant to watch. 
of Russia does look gorgeous. Anyway, the it's it's simply not a die-hard movie. There are some aspects, but they always feel shoehorned in. Like there were a couple of times where like you know Willis will you know, take off some clothing and underneath he's got you know, the the white t-shirt vest kind of thing. At first I didn't even realize that that was what it was supposed to be, but yes, yeah, you know, homage to the you know. Yeah, the, the classic ones, and yeah, it just feels like it's just there. It's it's just saying, see, it's it's a Die Hard movie. It's really, it's it's Skip Woods wrote this movie, and he also wrote, well, he wrote a couple of crappy movies. Asian is obviously not one of those crappy movies. He wrote Swordfish, Wolverine, and perhaps most importantly, Hitman. I, I can definitely tell that this is the guy who wrote Hitman, because he fits in some of the aspects that we know and recognize, but he doesn't comprehend what makes them good, and he does not manage to do so subtly. If you if this is the first Die Hard movie you watch, there's going to be a ton of stuff where you're like, Wait, what, was that some kind of you know, reference to something? And it's just, yeah, it just does not work. Yeah, you know, it's... We're not really watching McLean, we're just watching Bruce Willis. He's not this working class, everyman kind of hero. He's kind of just this generic, unstoppable, one-man army kind of hero. You could literally have put any other 80s action hero in this role, and there wouldn't have been a difference. You know, and of course we get the, the obligatory, ah, he's old now remarks, you know, I, I have a feeling like these guys are having some kind of wager off screen about who can fit the most of those into their movie, you know, it's just only watching the trailers for The Last Sand and Bullet to the Head, those seem pretty ripe with them, so yeah. The... You know, the, the smart-ass kind of quality to McLean is gone, the good one-liners, his arrogance, the, the realistic approach to the action. I already mentioned that people survive what they shouldn't in the action scenes in this. It's also just bigger than it... Die Hard was never really about big action. The you know, one through three, it's not about big action so much as consistent tension. The first three movies are immensely tense, and then there are these bits of action, but it's really not these huge action sequences, whereas this, it basically has a handful of large action set pieces, and I will say, they're pretty decently spaced out, and overall the pacing isn't too bad, the movie's 92 minutes, not kind of the end credits, and yeah, it's it doesn't start and just consent, you know, totally shock you too much, it, you know, you get a little bit of exposition at the start, and, you know, get a little bit get a little bit of time with the various characters, and then the, the action starts. And then after a while, it stops, and some more stuff happens before the next big thing. And I, I felt like they handled that fairly well. And actually, I should stay on the action, because there are some good things to it. At times, it's genuinely well choreographed. And I... While I would say it gets tedious, it does not really go on for too long. It's not. It's, and that's that's something that tends to be a problem with recent action films, that they just keep piling on and on and on, and you just get exhausted and you stop having fun with it. And yeah, that doesn't really happen here. Now, at the same time. Actually, another positive about the action, it does not repeat itself too much, which is also something that 
For a prime example, watch the, actually don't watch, just take my word for it, the Total Recall remake. Man, that was just the same thing over and over and over and over, and then over again. I guess I should check off a few more things on the list of things that make this not really a diehard film. The, you know, basically, the, the subtext of can you really trust, you know, the, I suppose it's especially like stuff like the FBI, there's, there's, you know, the other movies have these people of authority who just, yeah, they're, they're kind of obstructionist jerks, I think is how my friend and fellow reviewer Kyramid Head put it, and yeah, so, so it's kind of, you got it, like, like I said, the every, the, the working class hero, you know, the guy who's like, the big guys are not going to do things for me, I got to do them for myself, you know, the bootstraps, the, the whole thing, you know, American dream kind of thing, and it's just completely gone here, there's no, in fact, the authorities are not even really in the film, thinking of it, yeah. And the, I suppose that pretty well covers those aspects. It's, the, the whole thing, making it be in Russia, really seems like, like I said before, mostly just to distract from the way things are in the US and, you know, the, yeah, criminal justice and government, and I, I am going to try not to get too political on this, but I, there, there probably are more jabs coming. The, yeah, so the, the action is basically, and another positive, there's very little CGI in this, and you can tell, it feels real, you, you feel the impact. There's, one of the big action set pieces is a car chase involving this long car that's like military car, armored car that you see in the trailer and it's not bad I guess and and basically it has a lot of you know stunt work and a lot of stunt driving and it really is one of the more effective scenes and there's also this very cool helicopter that you also see in the trailer and I've already heard others you know refer to the helicopter scene and yeah it's it's not bad and yeah it again it feels like it's really there and frankly I would imagine it is I think they really got a helicopter up in the air and filmed it like that and it really makes a difference, you can really tell. So, the one of the really big things with the action, and actually in general, so I guess this segues nicely away from the action, is the continuity. And I'm really not a stickler for that kind of thing. I'm not the person who goes to a movie and complains because the continuity is not spot on. But here, it is decidedly poor continuity. There are so many bits where I feel like... I think the editor may have ADD because it feels like he's constantly getting distracted and then, oh right, should go back to editing and going on and on and on and just... It feels very half-hearted, the editing, and it reeks of not checking his own work. I've done some editing myself. That's one of the first things you learn. You, you gotta go back and check your own. See how it plays out. This movie does not feel like, it, it feels like they edited it at the last minute and then didn't have time to check 
there, there's this bit where McClane is like shooting bad guys and he takes like a one second break of shooting. And the moment it takes, he takes that one second break, it literally cuts to bad guys falling over as if they've just been shot, even though he just took a break. I don't even know how you manage to miss that. And it takes you out of the illusion immediately, and this happens a lot. There's one of the bad guys, again, you see in, in the trailer, he's like munching on, you know, these all like, what's up doc with the, with the carrot. And he throws away the carrot, and literally like a full minute later in the scene, he's still chewing, and he's been talking all this time. So I'm like, did, did that seriously just happen? I, 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 just, I cannot believe that they did not have a cut of that, where just, where he wasn't still chewing on it, or that it couldn't be cut out without being extremely noticeable. Did they not have a continuity person on set? It's just, it's ridiculously poor. And the, yeah, there, there are these scenes where things end up in a certain way, or get resolved in a certain way, and you just don't know how they got there. I certainly couldn't follow how they got to where we were. And again, it's just, it's really bad continuity. I'd say the, the car chase is one of the best examples of how, of it at its worst, as far as the, I'm not sure, I suppose this isn't really the continuity, but another really terrible aspect of the editing is in the action scenes, you're often wondering where is someone in relation to, like, the people they're shooting and so and so. It's, yeah, you, you literally don't know where they are in relation to each other, and it's especially bad in the car chase. And the one thing you really want in a car chase is to be sure where the cars are in relation to each other. How diff and, and it, it sucks a lot of the tension out of the scene. And it's really too bad because, again, it, it's a pretty decent, it's one of the better action scenes. It's, it's again, it's not very die-hard, but it's, it's fun enough, and it could have been even better. And another problem is that McLean's driving this regular Jeep, and the thing is acting like a freaking monster truck. It's just smashing other cars like it's nothing. Yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's like his, you know, not only lead person in a Hollywood film in vulnerability, but this movie, especially in vulnerability, just kind of creates a shield. It, it rubs off on the vehicle itself. Now, another, a big thing is, of course, the... I realized another thing I should say about why it's not really a doctor. The first and third movies have great villains. The second one, I'd maybe... Not quite as much, but, you know, I see. you remember Rickman and frickin' Jeremy Irons. Amazing, memorable villains. And it doesn't exactly hurt that they're Europeans, you know, in real life as well, but the character's very much European. So it's again, it's that kind of American... I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not dissing on the Die Hard trilogy, don't worry. I, it's, it's just, it's one of those fun things about it. It's, it's pretty fond of being American. And I have no problem with that. It's a lot of fun. And this... Sure, European bad guy, but we don't have any kind of interesting villain. It's actually, we have no memorable characters at all, really. The, the closest thing to any kind of consistent character is Jack, John's son. Yeah, even John McClane is not really, you know, any kind of interesting character in this. And even Jack is not that interesting, and it's really not the fault of the actor. <laughs> Both... Th there's, there's obviously... They, d they do the father-son relationship here, and... It could work. I mean, it, it doesn't help that it feels kind of whiny, that, you know, Bruce is all like, I should have been a better father, I, I, I 
should have been there for him more, and it just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't play right. And both actors are really trying, but it's like they just can't quite connect to the other. There's zero chemistry between them, in spite of both of them giving good performances. There's literally a bit, and this is again the continuity and the editing, there's literally a bit where I expected Jack to get eye contact with John, and literally he doesn't, and th that kind of failed moment is already a failure to begin with, but then they don't even use it as a fail. It's not even that Jack kind of looks away and like, Ugh, I should have known I couldn't get eye contact, you know, it's, that's my father, th that kind of thing. No, just nothing. And yeah, it's, it's almost as if both of them are acting opposite a CGI in character or something, like they can't quite tell what the other guy is going to do, so there's no connection, and they're literally, they're in the same shot most of that time. They're they're right there, and you just there's no connection. I want to see Jai Courtney more. I he's he's quite enjoyable, and yeah, I, I hope to see him in more, especially in more action films. He's definitely got an act for this kind of thing. We do have some one-liners. Most of them are really bad. The the humor is bad. There's like a few things that get laughs, but most of it is just... John has this recurring line of, Oh, I'm on vacation, and it just gets less and less funny every single time this line is repeated, and it's repeated way too much. And then most of the supposed humor and character, for that matter, seems to be quirk. It's like Skip Woods had just finished uh, an NCIS marathon or something, and he was like, well, quirk is character, right? No, no, it, it really is not by itself. you got to have something else there. And yeah, every single character has some kind of quirk or no personality at all. It's, it's kind of half and half, and... That's just kind of it, and some of the villains try to ham it up a little and be really, uh, grrr, evil Saturday morning cartoon kind of evil villain, and it just, yeah, it's, it's actually kind of awkward to look at. And, yeah, I mean, among the quirk, I've already mentioned the, the bad guy with the carrot, and he, you know, he mentions the, the line about, ah, I hate cowboys, and that's literally just there as, again, as a reference. It has nothing to do with anything. It's literally, and, and the, yeah, I, and he has this quirky kind of backstory that just goes nowhere. It's like there, there are things that are set up and then they don't go anywhere, and then there's a setup that actually does pay off, and the setup is so clumsy that when you see it, you don't think it's going to pay off, and then when it does pay off, you're like, and, and it's just, and you just know Skip Woods is like really happy with himself, really like, it's, it's that kind of, you know, lame joke where you're like, ah, it took me two hours, but I thought of this, you know, it's just, no, just try harder, the, the twist is unbelievably stupid, and the fact that it actually does kind of if, if you go back and think about the twist, they actually do sort of set it up. It's, it's, it, that just makes it even worse that it wasn't a last minute decision. Yeah, the... It does have an R rating, but it's just barely a hard R. There's like one bit of gore, and I didn't even really expect it to necessarily have gore, but there's barely any blood or violence. I'm not saying it should have been a PG-13, but it almost feels like it used to be, and then the last minute they decided, oh, better make it an R. And the... Excuse me. On the whole, if, if you really are just, excuse me, hoping for, excuse me, a big, dumb, action flick, 
you could do worse, if, especially if you're like comfortable with what action flicks are today. If, you know, in, in a few words, not very good. Sure, if it, it'll basically get the job done and it's short, at least. And, and yeah, I, I maintain I was not uncomfortable watching it. I, I didn't leave with a headache, which I did kind of... It, the whole thing's handheld. And yeah, that, you know, bad handheld is really, really terrible. But this wasn't that bad. It's kind of... It's, it's the Paul Greengrass approach where everything is like handheld, pretty much. I don't think there were any shots that weren't, so... And, yeah, it wasn't really any kind of... There are a lot of times where you can't really tell where things are. I already mentioned that for the action scenes, but... Yeah, it, it didn't give me a headache, and it wasn't... Bad. Kind of, but yeah, it's it's just not a movie that I would really go out of my way to watch, but not necessarily one I'd go out of my way to avoid either. I I will say I didn't think it was as bad as the critics that I've seen so far. I didn't think it was completely terrible. I've I'm not going to say I've seen worse, because that's not an argument. I expected it to be worse. And, yeah, if, if you have zero expectations, if you tell yourself, it's not a Die Hard movie, it's not a Die Hard movie, it's not a Die Hard movie, repeatedly, yes, I, I know I've done that reference before, then you'll probably be fine. Yeah, I think I've said everything. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.